What is going on everyone and welcome to today's video and in this video I'm going to show you how to create and model this 3D printed hex shelf that lets you combine them with other hex shelves to create one solid piece. With that said, let's get started. So the reason why I'm making this video is because I currently have office space here and I currently wanted to have something kind of on the wall to kind of fill up kind of the white space that I have on the walls right now. And I wasn't sure what exactly I wanted to put. The idea was to create something either that would kind of mimic or act as a work of art or something that would look cool or even if i wanted to showcase something like a shelf on the wall then i could actually do it and the idea came to me was this hex shelf in which i can actually print one of these and if i wanted to print one of a different color and connect them together then i'd be able to do so now of course i could have just went on amazon and purchased something like this but i actually couldn't find or something similar to something like this so i went ahead and created my own and what i want to do here is kind of document the process that way if you guys want to make it for yourself for your next home improvement project or even to use in your home office or as an accessory or even something that you can put on your desk as a nice little cool gadget or toy or whatever you'd want you'd be able to replicate this exact same design print it and make it your own. So with that said, let's get started. Now, before I get started, I will be making this project in Fusion 360. So if you do have some Fusion 360 experience or knowledge, at least some basic understanding, this will help you out a lot and it will make your life a lot easier. Now, of course, I'll be breaking everything down in complete detail. That way it can be as easy and simple for you to copy and replicate. But of course, if you prefer to download the STL files and get them directly from me, there'll be a link down below in the description where you can access and get those files if you choose to do so. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump into the computer and get started with modeling this project. Okay, so by now you should have opened Fusion 360 and have a completely blank canvas. Now on my screen, there are a couple of hex shelf designs that I have loaded up. Now here are four and what I want to do with this video is kind of show you four complete designs in which you can use to actually 3D print and depending on what you're looking for or what you're trying to achieve, you can replicate this exact same process to get the same results. Now the very first thing here, here's the original one. Now this one is actually four by four, meaning the total length of it is about 4.6 inches from top to bottom, but the total width inside is actually four inches. So it's fairly big to fit enough items or say small to mid-sized items or collectibles or any small little things. Of course, if you wanna make this bigger, it's better to scale it up in your slicer than to actually make this as big as possible in Fusion as it just, reduces difficulty level and reduces complications. So this is the original one. The next one is the same exact design. Instead, this one actually has a little bit of a thinner design from the outer edges here. You can see this little shelving part, the walls of the actual design, a little bit thicker compared to this one. I'll be showing you how to recreate this as well. The next thing here is one with the without the back plate. Now, of course, it's a fairly easy thing to do as well. And the last one is a half portion. Now, the reason for the half portion is in case if you want to have this laying flat on a desk or maybe it hits a corner or maybe just you just rather complete a design. More so, you just want to fill up an edge or corner or something like that. So I'll be showing you how to make that. So with that said, let's get started. The next thing you want to do here is before I get started with any sort of sketching, I'll be modeling this in inches. So if you want to uh, change the unit type to inches, feel free to do so. But if you also want to work in a different type of format, please keep in mind, I'll just be working in inches. So I will not be doing any sort of conversions here. So the very first thing here is getting started with our sketch. So I'm gonna click on create sketch. We'll sketch, we'll sketch on this plane right here. Then toggle our top view. And now we'll get started. So I'm gonna click on create polygon and click on circumscribed polygon. Then I'm select the origin and then just drag this out and type in 2.3 inches. The next thing we need to do here is press O on our keyboard, select the outer line and then type in negative 0.3. Press enter. Now you might be wondering why did I select a certain distance of 2.3? and Y.3 as our actual inner offset. Now, the reason for that is because the actual length of the hex shelf is 4.6 inches, but the actual inner design of the hex shelf itself is four inches. So that should be more than enough space to fit any small item that's at least under four inches in total height. So that's the reason why 
I set it to 2.3 and 0.3. The next step here is to actually extrude the actual design. So I'm gonna press E on my keyboard, press the outer edges here, and type in three inches. Then press OK. The next thing here is I'm gonna select the top. And now we're gonna get started with the actual design process here. Now, if you notice, the previous designs, uh, as I shown you earlier, they kind of have a very similar pattern. And the pattern is that the very top part has an open slot while the bottom doesn't. And they tend to be opposites of each other. So for example, if this one doesn't have a slot, this one does. If this one doesn't, this one does. And they're pretty much just opposites, which basically allows us the ability to basically connect them together without them ever interfering with each other in any way, shape or form. And that's the whole point of this project. So what I'm gonna do here is get started with making our actual slots. That way we can actually connect them together. So the first thing we're gonna do here is click on create sketch, click this top part. And now you should be working on this top face right here, okay? Make sure you're working on this top face of the actual design and not at the actual bottom origin plane that we started at the very beginning. So from here, I'm gonna press L on my keyboard, select at the very bottom here should be, this is basically the midpoint, and just bring this line up. Doesn't matter to how far, just far enough. Select the line and set this as your construction plane. Now we have what essentially is our midpoint and that way we can actually see what it looks like. So what I'm doing here is, pr is press L on my keyboard and I'm gonna look for the midpoint of this actual line here, which latches to around right here. I'm gonna press there, drag this out to about 0.75 and press enter. Next thing we do here is drag this line to attach to the actual top part here. Now it does not matter exactly where you attach it to, but just press enter. Now from here, what we wanna do is set the proper degree angle from this line here to this line here. So I'm gonna press D on my keyboard, press this line, this line, and I'm gonna set this to about 35 degrees. Now the line should be snapped to this actual top piece here without actually moving and it should adjust accordingly. The next step here is to press L on our keyboard and finish the actual design itself. Now you have one whole half piece of the actual slot. And what we're gonna do here is actually mirror this to the other side. So I'm gonna press S on my keyboard, type in mirror. This should be a sketch option here. Now, if you do not see this option here, you're probably outside the sketch. So if you type in S on the keyboard and type in mirror, it's not gonna show up. You need to be in the sketch option. So double click your sketch, press S, type in mirror. And now that sketch option should be available to you. So press on that. From here, we need to select our objects. So I'm gonna double click, select our mirror line. Now we have our actual extrude, our actual design as one whole final piece. And now what we can do is press that design, press E, and from here, select the bottom, and then press OK. Now we actually have our slot that allows us to fit in another hex if we wanted to. The next thing we need to do is repeat the exact same process, but to create the actual item or the thing that actually slides in. So I'm gonna go back to sketch two, double tap, press L on my keyboard, look for the midpoint here, and I can see that it's actually right here. Press there. Drag this out, make sure it's 90 degrees. Select this as my construction plane and press OK. The next thing we need to do here is before we get started with anything is find out the measurements of this exact thing here. And what I mean by that is finding out from here to here what that distance is and making sure that we not only get that number, but we translate it into an actual design here so it can slide in. So I'm gonna press D on my keyboard press this line here, this line here, you can see the number is 0.15. It says 0.149999, but it's actually 0.15. So press L, drag out, type in 0.75, press enter. Press D on your keyboard, click this line here, 
Now we have a 0.15 distance. Now we're pretty much almost done with the actual design here. The next thing I'm gonna do here, press that dot here, bring it in and press okay. Next thing, press the line, the line here. Now you can see we have an angle of 38 inches. We wanna fix that to 35 inches. And where I got that number, it's essentially from the angle here. The next thing here is actually finish the design. So bring this line here, bring it to the midpoint, and now we're pretty much done. Last thing we're gonna do here, press S on our keyboard, mirror, click it, mirror line, and press okay. Now we have the actual slot for fitting this in to this design here. But before we do anything, like we mentioned earlier, tolerances are a thing. And of course, this will not be nice, neat, and pretty when it comes to the actual printing. So I'm gonna give this a tolerance of about 0 0.02 inches. And that actually translates to about 0.5 millimeters, which should be more than enough tolerance for this to slide in together. So I'm gonna reduce this from 0.75 to about 0.73. Now it's slightly smaller, but that should give enough wiggle room for this to actually slide into this slot here. The next thing I'm gonna do here, select the sketch, press E, drag this around, select the bottom face, and press join. Now you have the actual top pieces here, and if I unselect my sketch, you'll see that the, this very top piece here has the opening and this one doesn't. Now, there's a very unique feature in Fusion 360 that allows us to duplicate these features that we just made onto the other sides as well. So I'm gonna press S on my keyboard, type in circular pattern, and from here, I'm gonna select features, then select one of the features that we just created earlier in the timeline. So I'm gonna select the one we made in the very beginning, select the axis, and the axis that I'm gonna pick is this green line right here. And from here, you see that the computer automatically populates three around each corner. So we have one, two, and this is of course the one we made, which is the third one. And it and it actually basic and it basically just circles around our axis that we have in the middle. Once that's done, press OK. Now we have three openings on each side, which is more than enough than what we're looking for. Repeat the exact same process for the actual second, uh, the actual second piece that we made earlier. So select features, select the extrude, select the axis, select the green line, which is our Y axis, and then press OK. Now we have one slot for each side. So we have one opening, one opening, one opening, a total of three. Then we have three of these, the actual slide in part one, two, and three. And now we're pretty much done with our design. That is the entire process from start to finish. Of course, you can send this off to print. It should print just fine. Now, additionally, if you wanted to create a back, you can press on your first sketch and there'll be a sketch section at the bottom. Select that, press E. Now you can type in 0.1 inches and press join. Additionally, if you wanted to split this body in half, you can press S on your keyboard, split body, select the body there, splitting tools. Now you can select the origin, which is this plane right here, as long as it lets me select it. There it is. Then press OK. Now you have one top and one bottom in which you can work with 3D print or use for whatever you choose to do so. So from here, if you also wanted to create the actual um, bottom part where it's actually closed, you can just select this face, press O on your keyboard, type this in, maybe set this to about a negative 0.15 or negative 0.3 since that's the actual outer edge. From here, just close this off. It's pretty simple. Obviously, this is not the cleanest way of doing it. Extrude. And now you have one complete half design of the actual hexagon shelf. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you guys have learned something. I hope you guys found this tutorial useful. Of course, I'm gonna undo the actual splitting process of the hex. This is what you should have. 
Additionally, if you wanted to make this a little bit thinner, you absolutely could. The only caveat to this is that you're gonna actually have to change the actual design, uh, the size of it. So I say negative 0.1. I'm basically just offsetting the top face, extruding this down, selecting the very bottom face there, cut, and now you have a thinner design. Now, of course, you could have done this from the very start if you really wanted to, but I wanted to show you all of those four complete designs. That way you can take this off to print and use it for whatever project or purpose you like to use it for. Okay, everyone, so here is the final design. I went ahead and printed four in total. It took me about eight hours or so, eight or nine hours. Um, I printed them using my Bamboo X1 printer on a higher speed setting and I think they turned out absolutely great here. The only thing I would probably would change with this design here is I, that I accidentally added a brim during the print which made the edges not as clean out as I would like it to be especially since there are sharp corners to the actual design but let me know what you guys think. Did it come out well or do you think it should be changed? Okay guys, so I hope you guys had enjoyed this video. Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below in the comment section down below. Was there any help or specific things that you want me to go over later on in a future video? Was there something that I was unclear about? Was there something that maybe during the modeling or fusion designing process that was a little bit unclear? Let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions down below as I do read these comments and I wanna make these tutorials better for you guys. That way you can guys can make better projects and products that you guys can actually use and put some utility in your 3D printing project. So like I said, if you want to download the file to this project here, there'll be a link down below. Then if you decide to grab the file, it would absolutely support me. I would appreciate anybody that does. But of course, I would recommend you guys to actually try modeling this as it's a fairly easy project to make. And I do think that you can learn a lot just by this simple little design here that uses quite a few of the functionalities that are pretty much in Fusion 360 that we pretty much take for granted on a day-to-day -day basis. So with that said, I hope you guys had enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.